On today's video, rabbits, you can make your very own one like this little fella over here, plus a reading from Magnificent Mabel by Ruth Quayle. So now I thought it might be fun if we made some cuddly bunny rabbits. These are really easy to make and they're super cool looking. And all you need is one of these. It's a face flannel. Um, it's 30 centimetres square in shape. And then you're gonna need some rubber bands as well and then a few bits and pieces to decorate our bunny with. So to kick off, what you need to do is fold your flannel nearly in half, but not quite, which is what I've done here, so that you've got two little peaks that overlap. And then you need to fashion the first one at the front into a bunny ear shape, then get your other one at the back, give it a little twist around, did you see what I did? So there it is. I'm going to twist it round and then also fashion it into a little bunny ear shape. So there I have two little bunny ear shapes. And then you need to get your rubber band and then wrap it round the ears to keep them fixed in place. There we go. So there already I've got two little bunny ears. And then what you're going to do is lay your flannel out on the table and then just roll it up from the end and keep going till you get to the top. So it's a bit sort of like a pancake, there we go. Then what you're going to do with your roll is keep twisting it around till it comes to the back of Bunny's ears like that. And there you can see a sort of bunny nose has started to form there. So now you need to get another rubber band to hold that in place so that bunny's head and ears have now formed and bunny is taking shape. There we go, I've got a little bunny head and you can have a little play around once you've got your rubber bands holding everything in place so that you can fashion your head into more of a head shape if you want. So once you've got Bunny's head fashioned how you want it, so Bunny's got a little cute mouth there, then you should have sort of two halves of your flannel under Bunny's neck. So we're going to take Bunny uh, left, no right, right side rather, if you're looking at Bunny's back. And then we're going to wrap it around Bunny like a little scarf. There we go. And so now Bunny only has one tail, essentially. Um, we've wrapped the right side, if you're looking at Bunny from the back, around Bunny like a scarf. And then now with the left side, we're just going to roll this up. So just literally roll it up until you've got a section that comes under bunny's neck like that there we go bunny's got a little loose hair there um so now we get another rubber band and put it all in tight so bunny's scarf should be pulled in tight and then do your rolling quite tight if you've got that little end you can just tuck it away anywhere where it's hidden from bunny's scarf and then get rolling till bunny has two uh, little bunny feet that we're going to make under Bunny's neck. Okay, so there we go. We've rolled and what we've rolled is now going to be tied with another rubber band. So here we go. I'm going to tie this bit. So this rubber band is going to be tied with the same rubber band. So align it with the rubber band that was already going round our little Bunny's neck. Here we go. And then you should have something a bit like this. Now, to give Bunny two separate feet, you need to get another rubber band and tie it round one foot to separate it off from the other foot. I've only got a blue rubber band left. So uh, obviously it's not as well disguised Bunny's feet than if I had a brown one, but hey. That's all I got. Okay, so now Bunny's got two little feet because we wrapped the rubber band around one half 
of the bit that was sticking out. There we go. My face fan has got lots of loose bits because it's an old face fan. So I'm going to cut off any loose bunny hair just to neaten bunny up a bit. Right, there we go. So bunny's now got two little feet. So depending on how tight your rubber bands are and how fluffy um, your flannel is, hopefully there won't be any showing, but any that do show like that, you just need to uh, fashion your bunny so all the little rubber bands are hidden away. Now for bunny's tail, you could pull out a bit of flannel and put another bit of rubber band on. So bunny's got a bit of a, a purple tail sticking out of bunny's bottom, but um, you could always, yeah, just stick on a pom-pom for bunny's tail. So there we go. That is your basic little bunny. And um, you now can get ready to stick on all the little cute face decorations and nose and whiskers. And I'm going to give you lots of different options for how to do that for bunny. I just had an idea. I found a pipe cleaner. So I might see if I can use a pipe cleaner on uh, bunny it's all about improvising and using what you have around you and seeing what works so i'm going to give the pipe cleaner a go i could even put it over the top if i wanted let's see whether that works give it a twist what does what does everyone reckon do we prefer the the pipe cleaner tail uh do we think that's better as bunny's tail yeah why not okay gonna get the scissors Instead of scissoring it off, I've just kept wrapping the pipe cleaner around Bunny's tail. And so now Bunny's tail is a, is a nice little fluffy tail with no blue rubber band in sight. Right, so ready now to uh, get Bunny's facial features on. Poor Bunny is blind at the moment and can't see, so I need to give Bunny some eyes. Um... You could, right, use googly eyes. And if I'm honest, I always think less is more. So I don't think they look as cute as some of the other options that I'm going to show you. But I'm going to show you the effect. There we go. So that's bunny with googly eyes. Obviously, they come in different shapes and sizes. Um, you could draw some eyes and stick them on. So literally, uh, you know, like that sort of thing cut it out and stick it on but i think the eyes look better filled in like that so you could cut that out and stick it on or a really clever way to do it is just uh if you don't have black card just color some card in black or paper and then if you get a hole punch and then punch out two holes. I think they look much better than googly eyes. Let's have a look. There we go, are they level? Anyway, you can take time and care to get your eyes level. I've got a little pink nose here as well. So I'm gonna stick that on. Um, you could, if you wanted to, do a sort of little heart shape for the nose, which can be quite cute, but like I say, these hole punch circles, I think they work really, really nicely. They're really very cute looking. Another thing I wanted to show you was if you had any pom-poms knocking about, you could put a pom-pom tail for Bunny like that. And then we're ready to also do whiskers on Bunny. Now I've got quite a few options for whiskers as well. Um, I always think like a bit of wool is good. You could use wool or thread. Um, also, you could use pipe cleaners. They, they work quite well as well. Alternatively, you could get a marker pen and just draw whiskers on if you're actually uh, defacing your face flannel forever because this can always be converted back to a face flannel if you're not using anything to sort of hardcore on it. Um, right, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go 
for little wool whiskers that I can just stick on. I think what's good about the thicker whiskers is they're sort of bold and they contrast as do the black eyes. And I've decided I'm gonna make my nose a little bit pinker. So, you know, that's the thing, even just changing color of something can make a massive difference. So there we go, our cuddly bunny is totally done and totally fluffy and totally cuddly. And they're really cute. And who knew that you could make this out of just a face flannel and some rubber bands and a few little features for the, the eyes, nose and whiskers. It's so cool. Super cute and super cuddly. A reading now, staying on the theme of rabbits from Ruth Quayle's Magnificent Mabel and the Rabbit Riot, chapter one. My name is Mabel Chase. Some people say I'm a sweetie heart. Not everyone agrees. Sometimes life isn't even fair. Like for instance, I don't have one single pet in my whole life. This is not a good situation because I'm keener on pets than most people are. I know 100 breeds of dog and I'm up to date on the life cycle of a guinea pig. Pets are better than sleepovers and I scream. Pets are my favourite subject of conversation. Mum and Dad say I'm too young for a pet of my own. They say I'm not responsible enough. When they say this, I scream and shout rude things. Then Dad says that's what I'm talking about and sends me to my room. And also, he gives Mum a look over my head that he thinks I can't notice, but I can. I'm a noticing sort of girl. I tell my Mum and Dad that actually they don't know what they're talking about. I shout that quite a few people my age have a pet of their own. I shout that lots of people at my school have two pets. Florence Carter has so many pets, she can't even count them up on two hands. She says it would take her three weeks to count them. Florence Carter lives on a farm in the real countryside. On farms you have so many pets you don't even notice them. Florence Carter has too many animals. For example, inside her kitchen, Florence Carter has got two dogs and four cats and three hamsters. Inside her bedroom, Florence Carter has a ferret. Florence Carter thinks a ferret is an everyday sort of pet. When anyone could tell her that ferrets are rare, Florence Carter is quite a spoiled girl. Florence Carter has chickens that roam free all day long until it gets dark. At dark, Florence Carter has her own special job of putting the chickens away so they won't get eaten by a fox. Florence Carter doesn't like getting the chickens in. Florence Carter moans about the chickens from morning till night. Florence Carter takes chickens for granted, but even Florence Carter is not as spoilt as my sister Meg. That's because yesterday my sister Meg got a true life rabbit for her birthday. This is the whole tragedy of my life. Anyone can tell that I am the rabbity one in this family. I have rabbit wallpaper and rabbits on my bed. I have a rabbit alarm clock too. Everybody knows that I'm keener on pets than anyone else in this house. Mum and Dad know that I am the one who really needs a pet. Meg's new rabbit is called Henry and has silky fur and a woofly nose. Henry is just my type of rabbit. When Meg opened Henry's cage, she made a squealing sound. I thought Henry is quite scared of that squealing. When Meg picked Henry up, she squeezed him tightly. I thought Henry does not look comfortable at all with Meg. When Meg looked at Henry, she couldn't stop giggling. I thought it's quite rude of Meg to launch the poor little bunny rabbit on his first day in a new house. If I had a new rabbit for my birthday, I would not laugh at my rabbit. If I had a brand new rabbit of my own, I would keep an eye on it all day long without stopping. But my sister Meg only spent the morning keeping an eye on Henry. After lunch, Meg went to the shops with Dad to spend her birthday money. She just whizzled out of the front door and waved goodbye. She had forgotten that she even owned a true life rabbit of her own. When I looked out of the window, I saw that sister of mine skip on top of the pavement. I saw her smiling at Dad. I saw her jangle her purse full of birthday money. I thought it's unkind of Meg to buy even more presents when she has already been given a real life rabbit. I tried to tell Mum about Meg being unkind, but Mum was digging the garden and listening to the radio. Mum told me I shouldn't moan about people when it's their birthday. Mum said I was the one being unkind. 
Mabel, said Mum, be a good girl this afternoon. And then we can all eat Meg's birthday lunch when Meg comes back from the shop. Meg deserves to have a fun day and she deserves to have a lovely birthday lunch too. I thought, what about me? I thought, I should deserve to have a lovely day too. I said some rude things in my quiet voice that Mum can't hear, except sometimes Mum hears more than you think. Then I crept over to look at Meg's birthday lunch, which was all laid out on the table. There were all Meg's favourite things, and there were some of my best things too. There were party rings and sausage rolls and salt and vinegar chippy sticks. There was jelly and cheese twists. There was birthday cake with pink frosty icing. I didn't even take one chippy stick. I thought I'm such a good girl. I thought I'm not the one who is spoilt round here. I left the birthday lunch all neatly on the table where it belonged and I went to have a look at Henry. Henry was in his hutch and he did not look happy. I thought someone should be keeping an eye on that rabbit. I could tell in almost less than a mini second that Meg was not looking after her rabbit properly. The only food that Henry had was one droopy lettuce leaf. I thought that is quite measly of Meg. I thought Meg is starving that rabbit, so I had to give Henry a proper lunch. But Henry did not like party rings or sausage rolls or salt and vinegar chippy sticks. He wouldn't eat jelly or cheese twists. He would not go near Meg's birthday cake, not even the pink frosty icing. I thought Henry is quite a wasty rabbit and Mum does not like waste one tiny bit. I thought Mum would want me to do something about all this waste. So I invited my friends over for a feast. It was quite a bit fun. But the thing about my friends is they are messy. I tried to tell my friends to eat nicely, but would they listen? No, they would not. Rebecca dropped biscuit and cake crumbs on the floor. Laura Orla crunched up crisps in her hand and threw them everywhere. Dave was spilly. I was just about to start clearing up all their naughty mess when I remembered Henry. I thought someone should be cleaning that rabbit's hutch. I thought Meg is neglecting that rabbit of hers. So I went to the cupboard under the sink and got out the fluffy green duster that Dad says is just for cleaning and not for playing with. And I used it to clean Henry's hutch. It was quite a smelly job because rabbits do lots of poos. Luckily, just in time, I remembered that the green fluffy duster is actually a broomstick. And everyone knows that broomsticks are too precious to be covered in rabbit poo. But just as I was about to put that broomstick safely back in the cupboard under the sink, it whisked me up into the sky. I flew to the top of a rainbow and slid all the way down. I landed in the fluffy white clouds. I whizzed through the air at 153 miles per hour. But then I remembered Henry. I thought someone should be cuddling that poor rabbit. I thought that rabbit is lonely. So I took Henry out of his hutch. But Henry was a bit too wriggly and he was not very good at being stroked either. So I very carefully put Henry safely in the toy box. Only this woke up Elwyn and Bilbo. They wanted to play the jungle game and the thing is, they made me join in too. We swung through the trees, we read stories in hammocks, we found the waterhole. I was just getting my breath back when Meg and Dad came home from the shops. Meg raced into the kitchen and opened Henry's hutch. Then she looked all around her, put her hands over her face and turned to me. Mabel, she said, all wobbly. Henry has escaped. He had a riot in the kitchen and he's ruined my whole entire birthday lunch. I did not say anything. I thought, what a naughty rabbit. Meg looked everywhere for that naughty rabbit. Mum and Dad turned the house upside down. I searched too because I wanted to be a good, helpful girl, like Mum said I should be. I found Henry in the toy box. Everyone was pleased with me. They said three cheers for Mabel. What a good girl. They said, Mabel, you're magnificent. It was a bit like my birthday. Meg put Henry back in his hutch. She locked the door very carefully and then she gave me a hug. Mabel, she said, seeing you were the one who found him, would you like to share Henry with me? I looked at Henry's silky fur and woofly nose. That is very kind of you, Meg, I said. But Meg, I have slightly gone off rabbits. They're a bit too naughty these days. I'm more keen on a different type of pet. 
But Mabel, said Meg, I thought you loved rabbits. I do like rabbits, I said, just not as much as snakes. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please spread the word and please subscribe and see you next time. Bye.